Who was Melchizedek? The figure of Melchizedek appears, after Abraham's victory against the four kings. Melchizedek is King Shalem, which many have identified with Jerusalem. Abraham returns as a great victor, he overcame the four northern powers and even regained his soul and property. And met with the king of Sodom, and Melchizedek king of Shalem. The meeting should be seen as a royal reception in honor of the one who freed the people of Canaan from the northern threat. Melchizedek king Shalem owes nothing to Abraham, the war did not take place in his country and nothing was taken from him, neither life nor property. Nevertheless, he behaves with great generosity, he brought out bread and wine and blessed Abraham and God for Abraham's victory. As a result of this attitude, Abraham finds it appropriate to give Melchizedek a tenth of all his possessions. Melchizedek's standing before Abraham parallels the well-known procedure of surrounding kings standing before the victor. And it symbolizes Abraham's recognized political status after the war. In this war, Abraham fought for the benefit of the inhabitants of the land and freed them from the captivity of the enslaving foreign kings, and therefore gained recognition and sympathy among his neighbors. The king of Sodom recognized Abraham's rights due to the war, that God's promise to Abraham was fulfilled, and there was a blessing. Genesis 12 verse 2. Avram was a blessing to his surroundings, and its people blessed him. These verses interrupt the description of the meeting between Abraham and the king of Sodom, and its description continues afterward. According to the book of Genesis, the place called Shalem does not characterize Jerusalem but the area of Nablus. Genesis 33 verse 18 and Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, on his way from Padnerim, and he camped before the city. On the other hand, there are those who say that Shalem is the future Jerusalem, and Abraham's meeting is precisely there, giving Jerusalem its importance and status already in the days of Abraham. In Abraham's meeting with Melchizedek, there is another character and that is the king of Sodom. So Melchizedek's role in the overall story is to be a secondary character to the king of Sodom, and to illuminate his immorality. The king of Sodom, whose city was resettled by Abraham, did not bring out bread or wine in Abraham's honor. While Melchizedek, those who had not benefited from Abraham's victory over his nation, behaved generously towards him. The figure of Melchizedek appears one more time in the book of Psalms, and the main focus on him comes precisely in extra-biblical literature. The first mention of Jerusalem in the Bible is in the story of the meeting between Abraham and Melchizedek, king of Shalem, in Genesis 44 verses 18 to 20. And this is in accordance with the accepted identification of Shalem in Jerusalem. The importance of this section for the history of Jerusalem is manifold since it refers to a period that has disappeared in the history of the city about which we have no information from any external source. Is the name Melchizedek a proper name or a nickname? The element Zedek is found in the names of the kings of Jerusalem and the great priests, among whom should be named. Adonis Zedek, Joshua 10 verse 1. Zedekiah, 2 Kings 24 verse 17. Zadok, 1 Kings 2 1 a.m. And Yehudzek, 1 Chronicles 5 verse 41. Can we conclude from this that Zedek was an ancient nickname for the city, and the leaders of Jerusalem were named after their city? Or perhaps they were named after a Semitic deity, whose name was Zedek? The proof of our argument is visible in the rule of the final king from the Davidic dynasty during the period of the initial house. The original name of this king was Methania, but the king of Babylon changed his name to Zedekiah when he came to power. 2 Kings 24 verse 17. Only two verses. In the Bible mention this character, and yet he is one of the most intriguing characters. The story begins with a coalition war between the four kings against five other kings, who were later joined by Abraham, 
and is described in Genesis chapter 14. Melchizedek appears once in the Bible, and once more in the book of Psalms. Psalms 110 verse 4. The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who is Melchizedek and what do the different religions think of him? It turns out that even though he was mentioned in only two verses, he is talked about a lot. Despite his passing, many years ago, he still remains a renowned figure in history. His legacy lives on in ancient books, as well as the stories that have been passed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. From the verses it is clear that he was a king and there were probably behind him a community of people who followed him. The fact that he did not belong to any coalition of kings shows that he was a figure of peace. In other religions Melchizedek is in the highest place, much more than an ordinary human figure. In Christianity, Melchizedek is identified with Jesus. In the Book of Enoch 2 there are many references to Melchizedek as part of Enoch's heavenly journeys. And in Islam there is a positive reference to Melchizedek. One of the interesting references to Melchizedek is in the Qumran scrolls. He is referred to as a divine figure even though the previously mentioned verses speak of a human being. It is also mentioned as an apparition of Michael the Archangel. Melchizedek is the 35 great-grandson of Enoch ben Yarad, the founder of the priesthood, and the brother of Noah ben Lamech. The hero of the story of the flood and the tablet tradition. Melchizedek son of Ni, the 11th generation of mankind. One of the heroes of the priestly tradition of the dynasty of the sons of Zadok and of the authors of Enoch's literature. Is described in the Bible in implied language as an extraordinary mystical priestly figure. Who transcends the boundaries of time and place. The figure of Melchizedek which diverges in the various traditions into an angelic priestly being who stands at the head of the armies of the children of light, and defeats the enemy with a crushing victory by the power of God, and into a priestly identity that establishes an eternal priestly lineage linked to Mount Zion. Melchizedek is described in the Book of Enoch too as the one who was taken to heaven to watch in the generation of the flood. And God said to Michael the archangel, Go down to the earth to, Ni, the priest, Melchizedek's father. And take Melchizedek, a boy who was with him. And put him in heaven to watch Melchizedek stays in heaven. Outside the limits of human time and place, until the renewal of the priesthood in the city of Shalem, whose descendants will hang from Melchizedek, king of Shalem. Examining the character of Melchizedek in the light of the Qumran scrolls shows that in some passages he is the one who carries out the divine plan and in other passages of the scrolls he is described as God himself. In some of the remains of the scrolls, Melchizedek is identified with the figure of the Messiah and his role to redeem all the children of light. The case of Melchizedek is therefore very interesting, because as we have seen, in some scrolls he is described as the Messiah as well as in others. In the book of Melchizedek, Melchizedek king of Shalem, the Messiah priest, is associated with vengeance, redemption. The prophecy of comfort from the book of Isaiah 20. And the redemption of slaves on the day of atonement in the days of the sparrow. And to Zion, the community that broke away from the path of the sinful people, apart from the fact that the holy city and the temple are named there. Not all the details are clear in the fragmentary scroll, much of which is hidden from the visible, as the boundaries between a god, an angel, and a priest born of a woman who becomes a priest forever are breached. Such is the face of things also in the tradition of Melchizedek. Son of neither priest in the book of Enoch 2, Enoch 2 chapters 22 to 23. Melchizedek Son of Ni, the priest. Son of Lamech. Son of Methuselah. Son of Enoch, who taught Methuselah the laws of the priesthood. Was a high priest who was born in a supernatural birth and had the seal of the priesthood on his heart. 
Melchizedek is the one who instilled this priestly tradition in Abraham, at their meeting in Shelem is Jerusalem, as written in the Outer Scroll of Genesis. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.